Now, I'd like to thank you for in, uh, inviting Ocean Harvest to speak at this meeting. I'd also like to apologise for the absence of um, Stefan, who couldn't make it today, so I'm here to uh, speak on his behalf. So I'm going to talk about um, marine functional food, and I'm going to tie that in with uh, the work we're doing in Galway at Ocean Harvest. Um, so uh, traditionally, food is consumed to provide uh, adequate, uh, adequate nutrition, and um, I suppose it can, all food can be considered functional in this manner. And it's traditionally been marketed for its ability to provide adequate nutrition. However, in uh, recent years, there's been considerable uh, interest in uh, certain food components and how they can benefit health. Uh, so as we're all aware, central nutrients that are present in food include carbohydrates, uh, proteins, fats, vitamins, and minerals. So uh, what exactly is functional food? Um, well, the term functional food was first coined in uh, Japan about 30, 35 years ago. But according to the EC Concerted Action on Functional Food Science in Europe, uh, functional food is something that beneficially affects one or more target functions in the body uh, beyond adequate nutritional effects in a way that is relevant to either an improved state of health and well-being or else a reduction of disease. Uh, it's important also to note that under this definition, uh, functional food is consumed as part of a normal food pattern and is not a pill or a form of dietary supplement and is uh, almost certainly not a medicine. So functional foods have uh, inherent functional components or else they have uh, functional components which are added to them. Um, in the middle here we can see omega-3, uh, eggs that are rich in omega-3. Um, so the animals were fed diets high in omega-3, this is passed on to the eggs and the eggs can then be marketed as eggs that are high in omega-3 which um, as we all know has many uh, benefits as regards to cardiovascular health. Uh, there's two products there we might be more familiar with, including Danacol, which contains sterols, which have been shown to lower cholesterol, and Avonmore Supermilk, which is fortified with vitamins, such as vitamin D, which is beneficial for uh, bone health. So functional foods contain bioactive components, usually in small amounts, that can act on various systems within the body. Um, so these bioactive compounds could con include, uh, say, polyunsaturated fatty acids, prebiotics, probiotics, which could act on say the immune system, gastrointestinal function, uh, cardiovascular system. Um, Ross talked about uh, antioxidants this morning which can act um, towards oxidative stress defense. An example of this is lycopene, uh, which is present in tomatoes. And as I mentioned, vitamin D is present in uh, milk, which can, uh, is beneficial for uh, bone health. Uh, so what about marine derived functional foods? So there are many sources of marine functional foods. Um, in addition to seaweed, we have marine sponges, we have fish and associated fish processing byproducts, we have shellfish, we have micro and macro algae, and we have marine bacteria. Uh, so there's a very diverse range of sources there, and it's worth noting that even within the seaweed group, there's huge diversity with the red, um, brown, and green seaweeds. So with over 70% of the Earth's surface covered in uh, water, marine resources are an unrivaled source of compounds uh, that have the potential to improve health either as a food, um, a sole food by itself, or as an um, addition to existing foods. And the global work market for functional foods is estimated in the region of 60 million, uh, billion euro. So some examples here of marine-derived functional ingredients. We have polyunsaturated fatty acids, which is EPA and DHA. Polyphenols, uh, such as fluorotannins, which are powerful antioxidants. We have proteins and peptides. Um, I think this year um, a paper was published by Chagas and Ashtown, um, which identified ACE inhibitory peptides from seaweed. Um, so th this is beneficial towards cardiovascular health. Amino acids, such as taurine, which is present in sports drinks. Polysaccharides, such as phocoidin, again, which Ross touched on already. And um, carotenoids, which are powerful antioxidants. So what are the challenges when um, coming up with a new marine functional food? We have the long-term research needed, um, which encompasses the extraction, the characterization of chemical composition and mechanism of action. We also have toxicity, taste, and maintenance of uh, bioactivity in the final food product. And we also have legislation. So in, with the extraction of bioactive compounds, we require adequate speed, adequate purity, adequate yields, it has to be economically feasible. 
We must use sustainable materials where possible and uh, be environmentally friendly and minimize use of toxic organic solvents. It has to be upscalable and have the ability to maintain bioactivity. So all the challenges include the taste. Um, for example, fish oil has a typical fishy smell and unple unpleasant taste and poor oxidative stability. Uh, therefore, polyunsaturated fatty acids are commercially produced via microalgae cultivation. Toxicity is another concern. Uh, an example of this is vitamin A, which is a fat-soluble vitamin, um, which we need for growth and immunity. However, in excess, it causes nausea, drowsiness, and death. So all that polar bear there in the corner looks fairly harmless, I think. There is enough vitamin A in one gram or 30 grams of a polar bear's liver to kill the human, so, yeah. <laughs> Just in case you're ever in the North Pole. Um, in terms of legislation, there is no European legislation specifically for functional food, but the food safety aspects are already covered by existing uh, EU regulations. Um, therefore, any claims must be substantiated on any functional food that is marketed. But the question remains, uh, what exactly is sufficient scientific evidence? So the types of claim that can be made are a nutrition claim, for example, if food is high in calcium, a health claim, which implies that there's a relationship between a food uh, and health, for example, good bone growth, a reduction of disease claim, which implies a consumption of a food significantly reduces the risk factor in the development of a human disease, such as osteoporosis or cardiovascular disease. So the European Food Safety Authority evaluates the scientific evidence for the claims. And as an example, in October 2009, about one third of the claims examined uh, resulted in favorable evaluations. Um, many people might remember this as Actimel had an advert that said uh, that their drink was scientifically proven to help support your kids' defenses. However, after the EFSA evaluation, the Advertising Standards Authority banned this advert uh, for Actimel. Obviously, the scientific evidence wasn't, evidence wasn't uh, enough. So in summary for legislation, there's a high cost of the scientific dossier for uh, a new compound or activity that's found. There is no specific functional food legislation. However, the um, legislation for, uh, for safety of existing foods um, also covers functional foods. Um, and in general, legislation is a huge stumbling block uh, for the development of marine functional food. It's likely to become more complicated in the future. So now I'm going to talk for a bit about seaweed bioactives, which is a bit closer to uh, ocean harvest technology. Uh, so as Ross mentioned, there are lots of bioactive compounds present in seaweed. So some of these include uh, amino acids and proteins, which have been reported to have ACE inhibitory, antioxidant, antimicrobial activities. We have polysaccharides like laminarin and fucoidin, which have anticoagulant, antibacterial, immunostimulant, and anti-inflammatory activity. We also have fluorotannins, which are antioxidants. Um, though seaweeds are low in lipids, about 5% of the total weight, most fatty acids are polyunsaturated, and um, brown seaweeds also contain high levels of iodine. So just to prove that I'm not making all this up, I have here information here from a paper in 2008 um, that shows the bioacti bioactivities of just one group of proteins that's found predominantly in red seaweeds, phycobiloproteins. So on the left there, we can see the biological activity in the middle, the patent number, and on the right, the reference. So there are a number of bioactivities there, um, most of which I think I already mentioned. So in addition to this, uh, seaweeds are also a rich source of minerals, trace elements, and vitamins. Um, the mineral fraction of some seaweeds can account for up to 36% of the dry weight and uh, some seaweeds can contain up to 10 times the level of minerals compared to some land plants. So how does Ocean Harvest utilize seaweed? Um, Ocean Harvest is a special, specialist in developing unique patented formulas from macroalgae for health and well-being and has developed several commercial formulas and extracts from seaweed or macroalgae for cosmetics, human and animal nutrition. Um, in doing this, it uses, utilizes a readily available um, resource that is seaweed uh, in a sustainable manner. So the main product is Ocean Feed, um, which is a patented uh, special mix of uh, specially selected seaweed species. Uh, ocean Feed is a feed supplement, and we currently have four open Ocean Feed products. We have Ocean Feed Swine, Ocean Feed Salmon, Ocean Feed Shrimp, and Ocean Feed Sea Pet. 
and ocean, and ocean harvest technology is ready to bring to market uh, more products in the near future. So I'm going to talk for a small, uh, for a few minutes on uh, ocean feed salmon, um, which is probably the best selling product at the moment. Um, just a bit of background, in 2011, the global production of salmon was about 1.7 million tons, uh, with the majority of this coming from farm sources. And um, the world production from farm salmon is increasing rapidly at a rate of around just under 9% per year. So as a constituent of aquaculture feed, there are antibiotics, artificial pigments, uh, growth stimulants, and so on. And these contribute to the uh, increasing costs of um, aquaculture feed. Uh, as well as being generally unpleasant uh, ingredients. Uh, so there's growing food uh, safety and health concerns uh, relating to these ingredients, as well as an in increase in the incidence of disease in farm salmon stocks in recent years. So ocean feed is a functional feed additive uh, that hopes to replace these um, synthetic and chemical premixes, um, reducing reliance on antibiotics. So here I have just a bit of information on the ocean feed salmon trial, which was performed in uh, ocean harvest uh, in the years 2009, 2010. Ocean feed was included in the diets at 15%, with three cages per diet and 600 fish per cage. Um, so the results we found from this trial was that uh, ocean feed is a highly pal palatable diet that salmon liked the ocean feed uh, based feed. Uh, the growth rate was better than the control group. The final harvest weight was better. There was a significant sea lice reduction, 60% less mortality, include feed, improved feed conversion ratio, and no microbiological or histological differences. But more importantly, probably from where we're sitting, uh, is how did the seaweed affect the taste? So we've already heard that, um, is it sheep fed seaweed or um, taste better, is it? Is it th different? different, okay. <laughs> but, um, here we have um, information from um, 60 chefs and restaurants who were given samples of the uh, ocean feed salmon after the trial. Um, so we had uh, positive feedback in terms of the um, color, the texture and taste of the product. And when asked if they'd switch to um, the ocean feed fed salmon compared to their existing suppliers, 90% um, said they would. So we couldn't have asked for better. Um, just a small bit of information on the ocean feed pig trials. We included um, ocean feed for pigs at 0.52 and 5% inclusion. Um, so this uh, trial work is still ongoing in collaboration with UCC. Um, but again, positive um, effects have been noticed, including improved weight gain, gut health improvement, less disease, and improved back end performance, particularly with regard to ammonia and uh, taste improvement at 5%. We also have ocean feed sea pet. Um, now we haven't done any trials with ocean feed sea pet so far, but a quick search of the literature would suggest that any seaweed to your pet's diet can have a number of beneficial effects listed there. So in conclusion and summary, the major challenges to long-term research uh, required to um, discover and develop market and market functional food is that it's too much for an SME to do alone. Uh, collaboration is needed with uh, universities and other SMEs. Uh, the legislation regarding functional food is um, ambiguous and is likely to get more difficult in the future. But um, the main finding is that um, functional food from marine sources such as seaweed have great potential and are relatively underexploited. Um, so thanks for your attention and hopefully I can answer any questions you have. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, and from what Stefan tells me, I'm not that familiar with the legislation as regards to functional for animal feed, but from what Stefan tells me, surprisingly, the uh, legislation is a lot more tricky when it comes to animal feed than human feed. So <laughs> it's, yeah. it's rather surprising. So.